So I've got two meters here today. They're both fluke. Um, one's an 8010A. Um, the other is a 8012A. So the 8012 has the low ohms range, which is kind of cool. And the 8010A has the high amps, the 10 amp range. Um, one on the left obviously still has the LCD. The one on the right has the seven segment LED drive. Um, there's a few different ways of doing that. I kind of did it a little different. Um, I'm going to convert this one next. So I thought maybe I would just share this process because it's, kind of, it's kind of a fun one to do. And uh, it adds a lot of, it makes these old meters look kind of a little cooler because the LCDs not even backlit. It's kind of a boring, but you can get these things for cheap and put a LED display in them. And they're actually kind of, uh, kind of a cool meter to look at. So we're going to start by ripping that one apart. So here you can see the original LCD. Um, this one's still actually okay. It's you can kind of see some weird artifacts in it, uh, just in the right lighting or whatever. And uh, I don't mind the LCDs if they were backlit; they'd be kind of cool. But the LED displays indoors are really nice. The LCDs outdoors, I think, are probably superior because of the bright sun. Sometimes seven-segment LEDs are hard to read, um, and obviously power consumption. So they were thinking about that when they built these because they got tiny power supplies and uh, a lot of them ran on batteries so they could run a lot longer with an LCD. The LED displays can take up to a couple hundred milliamps to run easy so um, they don't save power but they, they look cooler so I'm going to snap this LCD off try not to break it. tracks I wonder if that's actually already a replacement interesting I don't remember the other one having that on there and the zebra strip or zebra strip whatever you want to call it we have to save that because we're actually going to use it for that LED display so there's a ton of reasons why I don't want to solder to these traces. I could build a little adapter board and plug this in and then have wires over to the seven segments and plug it into here. But I thought I just kind of want to have something that will do the LEDs but just takes up the space of the original uh, unit and I don't have to solder anything other than power supply and one ground reference to this board. So I can have a little basically a two pin plug and bolt it in and you're done so a separate power supply is is definitely necessary it draws way too much current to run off this tiny little power supply so um that'll mount back here where the where the battery pack usually would go and we'll make a 3d print that adapts this board to the um, seven segment displays and holds the board for the buffer drivers which is really what's going to make the thing be nice and bright because then we can take the load off of the LCD drivers and uh, jack the current up as high as we want pretty much for LEDs. Um, so I'm just going to go and print that on the 3D printer. And so we're over at the 3D printer printing the mount. Uh, the mount will orient the LED display exactly where it needs to be and it will create a channel for the wires to interface with the zebra strip. Um, 0.3 millimeter nozzle. 0.1 millimeter layer height. I'm um, just letting Prusa Slicer do the defaults for extrusion width and everything else. So uh, it seems to work pretty good with this setup.
There's a zebra strip will live in there. And this just snaps into here. This basically mimics the, uh, so that fits right in flush, flush, and that'll put the display about 10 thousandths off of this face. So when your red uh, gel goes in here, it'll still stay as flat as possible. Um, so now it's basically a jumper wire game, copper wires up into here. And I'm just using uh, ethernet copper wires because they're very small diameter. The insulation is thin and uh, it's, it's abundantly available. And it fits in these tiny little holes, right? These are like, they're probably be about, probably about 20 thousandths as printed, but uh, the wire is about 15 thousandths. So it fits through there nicely. And then the wires will just lay in here and create a perfect uh, contact area for the zebra strip that the fa factory LCD used to interface with. And then we don't have to ax murder the meter. And we could also take this out and put it in another meter very easily. So yeah, there it is. Okay, so the uh, display is all done. All the contacts that will sit on the zebra strip are in. Um, the order of them is kind of built into the PCB, so you just have to kind of go, go through it. I wanted to put the pins this way, but it was really hard to get them all connected. It was a lot easier to get them in line with, the, with everything and in the right order with the, in line with the chips on the backside. So that's what I ended up doing. I don't really like the jumpers, but could do a second board that interfaced with the the zebra strip down here that came out and then maybe do a 90 header or something up to here or whatever but there is only so much headroom and you got to fit it in there and i don't know this is kind of an easier cheaper way to go <clears throat> and then you don't have to solder anything really to your to your uh scope or your um sorry your multimeter except the uh test point five will be your digital ground reference and then power supply that's it so we'll go put that together okay so i did a couple of things off camera just because they're a little bit tedious i just glued the aluminum box in with the this has got a small switch mode power supply wired directly to mains good for one amp um, the display with the resistors that are in it i got a 330 ohm resistors on the leds and with the 50 percent duty cycle and five volts peak to peak that ends up with about I think it was about five and a half milliamps per segment and I I made one before that with uh, 120 ohm resistors and it was so bright that it was it was too bright to be on the bench like it actually drown out the lights of other things and you'd have trouble seeing after looking at it it just was way too bright so I put 330s in there and that seems like a good compromise and I added one more filter in there to kind of make the red a little bit deeper and uh, tone it down even a tiny bit more. Uh, so I think we'll go ahead and put this thing in. <clears throat> so the zebra strip goes in. I think we'll put it that way's got bumps in it from the, the PC board before. Just put it back in the same spot that it was before. Why is hard to see if it's in the right spot? Let's just put it in upside down and it might be easier. So it's sitting in the groove. Push it up against the board. This is hard to do with the camera. Put our color filter on with the front bezel there. Just snap on. Ooh, that's a tight fit.
and the original screws thread back in here. You just cut threads into the 3D print pretty easy. So, like I said before, I put the power supply in. Uh, test point five is the digital reference, basically the ground for uh, the digital section here. Uh, and we need to ground the zero volts out of the power supply uh, and the board to that so that it knows what's going on in reference to the uh, LCD drivers. Um, the reason I wanted to put the buffers in there is because these things can only source like a like a half a milliamp, um, and you can get some pretty good seven segments that it can illuminate decent like that, but it's just not very bright. And it's also you know anything beyond a half a milliamp, and you're stressing the LCD drivers out, and who knows how long it'll even last. So I wanted to not burden the power supply. I wanted to not burden this chip. I wanted to not have to solder to these traces because these boards are really cheap. Um, you start soldering and unsoldering and repairing or whatever on, on these traces and you only get so much uh, time to work on them before they start coming off the board basically and you end up wrecking the thing. So this way, this is not, so we haven't soldered to this anywhere except test point five which uh, is accessible at a few other places anyways. So, Anyways, I'm going to uh, plug this in. So that's all of our, that's basically the wiring done once you're at this point. Um, flip it over, I'll put the shield back in. And then we'll uh, power this thing up and see if there's smoke. Just a nice spot there. That's it, it's all in there. This one looks quite a bit different without the low ohms board in here. I just need to put the uh, power button. Okay, where's the screws? There it is. All right, let's slap this sucker together. There we go. And it just slides together. Five. Should roll over here, boom. Twenty volts. Volt. There it is. 
four milliamps. Seems to be working pretty good. We're gonna go over here. 24. As you can see, it's just a lot nicer display. I like the seven segments. It's a bit of work, but. Let's go into full function here. We'll uh, go 0.01 milliamps. 0.011 we're getting. That's pretty close. They both have the exact same drivers. They both have the same resistors, same filters. They actually look really, really similar now. So yeah, both of them changed over. Just like that, easy peasy. So I was thinking I could put the, the 3D prints and stuff up on Thingiverse. I don't know, the circuit board kind of makes it a lot easier to do. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, if you stuck around this long on a multimeter video for old, old fluke multimeters, then uh, thanks for watching. And uh, you should probably subscribe because this is the kind of crap that I'm going to put up on a uh, semi-regular basis. Thanks for watching.